Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. How are you doing with your resolutions? So far, so good. I made a resolution not to have resolutions. I think I just broke it. I can put my glasses on. It's great to be back with you. Um, I was here uh, a little over a month ago, and we are just so blessed. You are very welcoming uh, to me and my family, and, and I, I sure do appreciate it. I, I brought back up today. I've got uh, my brother and, and his wife and his kids and my niece and uh, her husband. They, they've come from um, the northwest, uh, Seattle, and uh, is it Portland? Portland, Oregon? Yeah, so we've, we've all had a good time together. Um, we came together here in Del Rio to, you know, we try to do that every couple of years and everybody get together uh, and just get to see each other and have some, some time together. And this time, though, we, we kind of added a little twist. We got on a bus and went down to Mexico. And um, it's, it was interesting um, my, my mom uh, is from the area of T Torreon, or it, for those that don't speak English or Spanish, Torreon, maybe? That, uh, anyway, um, my mom had a vision to bring the family and to use that as an evangelical tool for the people that remain there. And um, it, was, it was awesome, it was stressful, it was, you know, imagine 40-something uh, people in the bus, uh, riding however many hours, 10 hours, there and back. It was, it was great. We had a great time together, but, you know, it comes with coughs and sneezes and all that kind of stuff. But um, it's great to be back with you uh, today. Today is a perfect day for like a New Year's resolution sort of sermon. I'm not going to do that. Um, however, we will be um, focusing on kingdom work. It is Sunday, and it's the first of the year, and it is a perfect reminder in this upcoming year um, what it is that we're doing for the kingdom of God. Uh, the last time that I was here, we talked about um, same focused as we were entering the season of Advent, um, it was the first Sunday of Advent to keep Christ first as we were leading into the holidays. And, um, and we talked about how we are here as ambassadors, right, for Christ. And so as ambassadors, whatever it is that we do, in whatever walk of life that we are in, our focus, our mind should always be kingdom-minded. Um, whatever it is that we do is a means to an end. Some people don't like to hear that. Oh, I have my dreams. This is my passion. I'm going to follow this thing. And it can be whatever your career is. But the Bible talks about how what we do here is to further the kingdom. And so we're going to get into that today. Uh, we're in Matthew 13 to start off. And it, it's, a, it's a radical way of thinking that Christ wants all of our attention, all of our focus, all of our energy. There, there is a cultural Christianity going on all around us. And it's not just American Christian church, it's it's all around us. It's, it's in Mexico. It's in other parts of the world. That The mindset is this. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to follow my passions. I'm going to go study. I'm going to go to this certain school, or I'm going to go and, and work at this certain job. And these are my hobbies. And, and God is my co-pilot. Have you heard of that? Have you seen that sticker? God is not your co-pilot. He wants to shove you aside and take the wheel. 
It's not like that song. What was that country song? Jesus, take the wheel, right? Move over. He wants to be Lord of your life. Paul talks about a voluntary slavery. That's deep, isn't it? That I'm no longer seeking after what it is that I want. And it's hard to say those words right now. We're in transition. And um, as I I look at my, my wife and my kids to say, Lord, your will be done wherever, whenever, to whomever. That's a difficult thing to say. But right there, right there is where God meets us. I'm not going to get too worked up yet. I'm going to get into scripture first. We're in Matthew 13, verses 44 through 50. Jesus is teaching in parables, stories. Some of them were very clear so that people could understand them better, understand what it is that he was teaching. And some of them were a little bit coded because at the same time as he was trying to bring people in, there were those that he was trying to shock. If you're not in, people got scared away a little bit. They came in for the good stuff. He was healing, he was feeding, he was doing all these great miracles, and so naturally, there's going to be a crowd gathering in. And so one of the ways that he kind of thinned out the crowd was going through these parables. But there was all, it was also a way of making things clear. So we'll get into, um, let's see, Matthew 13, verse 44. And it's talking about the kingdom. I'm reading in ESV, but whatever you have, um, you can read along. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy... He goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. A guy walking along. Somehow, I don't don't know how you just kind of run into treasure in the field, but it's a story, and he's trying to make it clear. He He finds a treasure, and he recognizes its value, and he takes off, sells everything, surrenders everything, for that one thing that he found. Is that sounding familiar? 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into the containers but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into a fiery furnace that place In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Those are hard truths. What Jesus is telling us is, this thing that I'm teaching you about, eternity with me, is well worth you surrendering everything that you have. It's well worth whatever it is that you go through as you surrender everything that you have. He's telling us that we need to be convinced that life here on earth with him and eternity and glory with him is well worth surrendering everything. A man goes and sells everything for this treasure.
in verse 49. So it will be at the end of the age. There's a separation coming. There's good and bad fish. There's a separation coming. Some will be thrown away and some will be kept. In Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46, we go a little further into that, that separation. When the Son, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations. Everybody's going to be there. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him. This is showing humility. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did you, we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the, kingdom will an the, the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, it's revealing the heart and, and their response. It's revealing their motivation. It's revealing where they are. And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those in the left, on, the, on his left, depart from me. You cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. Sick in prison and you did not visit me. We'll go back to that. A truly transformed child of God will care and will sacrifice and will do anything for that soul. Created in the image of God. Yes, a failure, a sinner, lost, blind, can't see past tomorrow maybe can't see past their next fix. As a child of God, that should drive us to compassion. Not just to check things off our Christian list. Not out of compulsion. Not because we're being forced. Not because we're earning anything. Because, like we talked about before, the right kind of tree will give a certain kind of fruit. A Christian tree will give Christian fruit. There will be evidence in our life. We don't have to claim anything. We don't have to stand up and say, I'm a Christian. There will be evidence in our life that people will say there's something special about that. There's something different about that person. Why does he care so much? I'm going to go back to 42. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then, 
they also will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? And he will answer them saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. We have enough capacity, right? Those at the, at the end here, that to call him Lord, to recognize who he is, there is belief. But not enough to have a transformed life. We meet people like that all the time. There is belief. Do you believe in God? Yeah, there's, there's a God. But is there a change in their life? Verse 46, and these will go away into, into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life with him. Like I was saying before, we do these things not because of a to fulfill commitments or a duty or out of compulsion or a list of things to do. Because he has made a change in our life. We are no longer who we were before. And people should look at us and see a dramatic difference. Not like, well, he's quit doing this and he started doing that. But a dramatic difference in who we are. And I... I can tell you, like I was saying last time I was here, I'm from Del Rio. I was born and raised here. And I'm not trying to brag, but if I've, you can find my schoolmates, and you can go and investigate and see what kind of a kid I was. And sometimes I was good and sometimes really bad. But they, they will all agree that who I am today is not who I used to be. And it's not because of me. It's not because, oh, I'm well studied and I recognize that there is a Lord and because of my genius, well, I'm now serving him. It's because of God's power. It's his power, his Holy Spirit transforming. And that's what we want to see in the people that we are reaching out to. But we need to be convinced right from the start. Before we, right, before we go out there, we need to be convinced and they need to see it in us. I was talking about before how we can talk to random people out in the street and we can ask them about their beliefs and in a in a religious way, we'll say, yeah, there, there is a God. But many are deceiving themselves in their eternal security. Let's go to Matthew 7, verses 21 through Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. There are many. I don't mean to pick on people that were partying last night. But there are many calling out to God this morning. You know what I mean? I'm from Del Rio. I know what goes on. <laughs> All right? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, 
but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. The one who does the will of my Father. So we are not, if we're not doing his will, we still leave, live eternally, but not with him. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And cast out demons in your name? And do many mighty works in your name? God, do you remember that one time, that one person that, that, that I talked to in kind of a subtle way said, there's a, there's a guy upstairs that can... The man upstairs. If I'm stepping on some toes, I'm not sorry. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I have no, absolutely no desire to hear those words. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. To be convinced. How? How sad is that to be convinced that you are secure because you believe. Because you believe there is a God. But to be fooling yourself on that last day and not be transformed. That is sad. And it should concern us, those of us that know that we need to make a difference in people's lives as a tool, not ourselves, not in our own power, not because we're so great, but as a, as a testimony, as a living testimony. Look what the Lord has done in my life, where he has brought me from. We may not all be theologians. We may not have every book of the Bible memorized. But we all have a story. We can all point to how God has intervened in our life. And when people say to you, hey man, you do such a great job, that's awesome. Whatever gifting we have. The Lord says that those that seek here on earth to be recognized, that is their reward. So we walk humbly, convinced that glory is awesome and being with him is well worth it. And whatever we go through here is well worth it. There are, like I talked um, last, time, last time I was here, we talked about false prophets and we talked about um, how they, the, the, we battle. Those that want to stick to the Bible, those of us that want to stick to the Bible, we battle false teaching. And there are those that will say, man, come to the Lord, everything is going to be great, and you'll get the car that you want, and the house that you want, and the job that you want. I'm afraid not. But as we go through those things, the same difficult things that everybody else goes through, that gives us an opportunity. It gives us an opportunity to point to Christ and give him the glory.
I wish I had more time to go further. Um, my, my wife said last time I went over. <laughs> I'll be back next week. And we're going to continue on this subject of kingdom work. And that's the challenge today. Man, look internally. Analyze what's going on in my life. Is my life for the glory of God? Whether I'm under a car, working on the car, going to school, doing homework, teaching. How is it that I'm using this opportunity that the Lord has given me to further the kingdom of God? How am I using this tool to lift his name, to bring him glory? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for another year, God, and we can look back at this past year and see where you've inter intervened, God, where you have, um, if we pay close attention, you, how you have delivered us, Lord, how um, your hand is visible, we can see your mighty work, God. Your provision, your care for us. Help us as we go into this new year, God. To be mindful of the things that we do and that we can represent you well. That we can um, do our work, do the things that we do, God. But to have that mindset of being ambassadors that we are on a mission. We're on a mission to reach those all around us and tell them about this great God that we serve. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your hand in our lives and, and being sovereign over our lives. Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name.